Hey, good evening, everyone. John Henry Soto here. Welcome to JHS Interviews. Um, just want to thank everybody in the past couple of shows. I've received some really nice messages um, about the show, and it's been a, a really great adventure so far. We've done about 25 guests so far, and I booked 23 for the rest of June. And I have uh, some pretty big guests coming on at the end of the at the end of the month and July. And it's just been a lot of fun. And all these guests are just so fantastic. And today. I have the one, the only, Mr. Dan Gregory, actor, screenwriter, producer, director, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dan Gregory. Yeah. Picture an audience and a huge music and, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. Dude, thank you so much for being on here. I, I'm so, so happy that you're here. Um, you know, it's funny. I was thinking about when, uh, right before I went on, I was thinking, oh, you know, we've worked together quite a bit, but we've never really sat down and had like a conversation, you know, <laughs> right? You're absolutely right. First, let me say, John, thank you for having me on. You're a cool guy. You're a talented filmmaker. I know you're a writer. You have all different media streams that you excel in. So I'm happy to be here. It's a privilege to speak with you and your fans tonight. I appreciate you for saying that. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Um, well, it's the truth. And to answer your question, because I like to beat around the bush a little bit, but um, yeah, we have worked together on a couple different uh, indie projects, but I don't remember the last time, maybe since like five years ago, we might have had like a little get to know you chit chat. And I think I gave you the old spiel, which is how I like to get myself uh, acquainted with new filmmakers like, hey. I'm interested in stuff. You're a director. I'm an actor. Let's make it work because I figure the worst you could say is no, you know, and right. if that's the case, then I move on with my life. Exactly. <laughs> so it's, it's a, uh, it's a, it is a pleasure to actually have a conversation with you now. And it's probably just because this industry is just so uh, it's a little bit crazy when you're trying to juggle a, a film. Um, mm -hmm. You just can't really sit down. I, I think that's going to change now in the future. I think a lot of people are, not taking those moments for granted. Uh, I know I'm de definitely not. Um, I want to embrace more. So, but let's talk about your, you know, where, where are you originally from? Are you from uh, Bayonne? Yes. Um, I was born in Caucus Hospital in 1983, but I've been a Bayonne resident uh, ever since. And uh, I think it's a great town. I'm not just saying that because uh, I don't really get into the politics of it, but mm -hmm. I've never had a problem in Bayonne. I have, well, not really family in Bayonne anymore. Most of them moved down the shore and some out of state. But I enjoy Bayonne. I think it's, you know, some of my best friends are here. My girlfriend's here. Um, I, it's, it's a nice place to live. And I think if we just saw the good in Bayonne and the art scene and the sports and the community, it, it's really something to be said. So when I hear bad press about Bayonne, I just change the channel, my friend. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate you saying that because we're actually live also on the I Love Bayonne page. Nice. Um, yeah, so that's definitely uh, the way I feel about it. And, you know, I'm not from Bayonne. I'm from, from the Bronx. But um, I do feel that where you live is where you have to respect and that, you know, only you can make it better. Um, and so that's definitely uh, the case, especially the arts here. You know, like one of the things that, that I realized when I started doing films which was really not long ago. I mean, when I came here, it was almost like 2012 I moved here. Um, I had been acting, but I wasn't really making films. I, I had just made one film at that point. It was a short. And um, so many great actors and, and filmmakers in Bayonne, like, and musicians, you know, and just artists and painters. And, I mean, I'm blown away by that. Did you see that growing up? Well, John, yeah, I agree. There's a lot of talent in, in every field in Bayonne. You know, we have athletes here who go on to the majors. You know, we have musicians like Megan Zerulis, daughter of the great Pete Zerulis. Uh, just music runs really like through their veins, and they're just talented people. You know, Meg does Broadway shows. She's the conductor. She's super talented, and she probably, you know, never advertised it just because she's very humble. But, you know, she's a professional and she's incredible. And you have people, I've said it before in interviews, like Tammy Blanchard. She's an Emmy winning actress. She's a great person. I've met her. I've had the privilege of having a few conversations with her. And she's, you know, very inspirational. She's one of these people 
as I found most successful people are, they encourage you. Oh yeah. And that means a lot. You know, that means the world to me. I think I saw her in quick check once and she's like, wow, I see you're doing a lot of stuff. And I just froze. And I, I was like, <laughs> yeah, she's like, okay, good talk. <laughs> and then she left and I had like a million things to say, of course. Right. But, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, yeah they were cool. Okay. And yeah, I did notice there's there's a lot of successful people here and uh, they inspire me and uh, they really force me to level up. I'm also one of these guys and I know you are, too. I can just tell by your demeanor and the few times we've worked together is that people who are successful are like motivating to you. you. You know, there's not a jealousy there. It's like, wow, good for them. And I need to step up and, and try to get into that realm and break down new doors and reach new, you know, achievements in my career. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely true. And, and for the few, uh, when I was, when I was acting, I, I got to go into a few big, big productions. Um, and I went to HBO a bunch of times for auditions. And when you start, when you're in, when you're auditioning for HBO, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it is a complete, like there, there's no, there's no casting. There's no three people behind a desk. You don't slate. You know what I mean? They know who you are. You know what I mean? They've already done all their research. You go into a room, you literally sit on a couch and you just talk to some people as they're drinking tea, you know, and they were just, and it was, it was, it was really, but they were so encouraging. They were just so positive about the work. And, and that to me is like a really big uh, uh, part of the industry. And there's this middle, I talk about this, where there's this middle ground, you know, where you have the indie films and stuff. But then there's this middle area where sometimes you run into people that are just not really on point or they're, they're, there's just, there's a little bit of negativity in this. Like they're not, at, they're not up there, they're, but there's this little layer and I've run into the layer. It hurts, but I, what, but when you do see the top, then you realize, Oh, I see. Okay. There's, there's some other thing there, you know, and, and, and of course, indie filmmakers are always wonderful. They're always willing to, to help other actors and, and other uh, filmmakers as well. Um, so for me, it's, it's a, it's a joy to actually be able to meet people like you here in Bayonne and to be able to experience what we're experiencing right now, you know? Um, so we, we um, your, your, did you go to school or did you study acting? Did you like, when was your earliest moment where you decided, Hmm, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to do this. <laughs> Well, first of all, I have to agree with you, what you were just saying. There are a lot of people in the middle, and sometimes they're very dismissive of others because they treat people like a certain way, like, oh, you can't help me, so I'm going to ignore you. And I think that's a, uh, like a really poor way to behave because, oh. you know, the, to me, it's like treat the door guy the same way as you treat the CEO because the tables, they turn fast in this world. Oh, man. And not just the acting business. So treat everyone with respect and you got to be careful because if you dismiss this filmmaker that turns out to be the next, you know, Quentin Tarantino, guess what? You know, that door mm -hmm. closed for you. So I'm not a fan of burning bridges. And if I've had unpleasant experiences with anybody, I'll just, you know, I'll still be polite to them. I just, you know, will choose not to work with them again. Yeah. Yeah. You know, let's, let's talk a little bit about that uh, because that, that is an interesting point. And when you're, when you, burning the bridges you know it's like people say that a lot right when you burn bridges mm -hmm. and stuff and really what it is 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 so much you just don't want to get on that bridge again you know mm -hmm. it's not even it's like i'm just not going to take that route anymore i'm going to take another bridge i'm going to go find another road um but this industry moves so fast you know like it could it literally just it's lightning fast and there are people that can actually elevate so quick and if you've had in some kind of altercation and some weird thing, 99% of the time is, is it's nonsense. You know what I mean? It's usually nonsense. And, and for a guy like you, I know that, that if it had ever happened to you, it would be very, 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 uh, would not be you. <laughs> you know what I mean? It'd be like, it wouldn't be your situation. Cause I've been on set with you enough to know that you're totally committed to what you're doing at that moment you're totally 100 percent committed like i don't even see you on set i see the character you know what i mean like oh, you are so committed you know so for me that it's like that's why i keep you know asking you and you know i know we have a couple of films that are still not out 
and I feel horrible about that. We're going to talk about that in, in a minute. But um, I just appreciate your demeanor and the way you carry yourself on set because it's it just shows that you're there to work. You know, you're there for the character and stuff. So I really appreciate that. But those characters that we are out there, you know, they're not really they don't have long careers. And that's and you see that, you know, and I've been in music industry. I've been long enough in just in entertainment that I've seen that happen. The guy has a big hit. He's got a hit song on the radio. I happen to know him. We have a little thing. We talk. And then suddenly the next time he's no no longer there and he's struggling. And, you know, it just goes fast unless you have a certain level of discipline. Um, you know, it's, it's really difficult. So let's let's talk about. Yeah, John, no. thank you. I, I, let me say I will answer the question about where I got the, the acting bug from. <laughs> um, but you paid me the best compliment ever by saying that, you know, you see the character because I put a lot of work into the character because I feel like that's why I'm there. In fact, the least interesting parts to me are the ones where it's like, oh, well, you know, the guy's pretty much you. And it's like, all right, well, that's not really why I'm an actor. You know, I'm a weirdo. I want to play characters. I want to have fun. I don't care about the lead. I care about the interesting role. If I'm not having fun or it's not something that's a challenge to me, it's not at the top of my list of to do's, of course. But of course, as, uh, as an independent artist and, and a filmmaker where I wear many hats and such and I feel like sometimes I get a break in acting. I'm also like hesitant to turn down an opportunity, even if I don't love the role, because there's also that, hey, well, it's kind of a challenge. So I make the best and try to give whatever version of that character I think meets a little bit with what's on paper versus what's up like in, in my in, insane uh, brain. Right. So um, to answer your question, 45 minutes later, <laughs> no, I, got, all good. I got the acting bug when I was a kid, and this is a true story. I actually told a similar story with the great LBJ on his podcast and um, summarizing just that uh, when I was a kid, like in preschool, the teacher had to call me either Egon from the Ghostbusters or he had to call me Donatello from Ninja Turtles because I would not come at a character. I would stay in that mindset, and that is a true story. So I knew then that I was screwed up in the head and then, and I would be playing with action figures with my back turned to the TV, reciting all the characters' lines in a movie before they said them. Wow. So it was there. And then I, I didn't really get into it officially until I was in college already. I was a second year senior because I like to party. I and uh, this very cool dude, Blake, he, he's an absolute gentleman. Lakes of Wapsie, Dark Light Media out there, if he's listening. Uh, he just, it's almost like he, he saw the glow, I guess, of an actor or, or someone that has a potential. And he looked at me, and I wasn't sure what kind of look it was, but he, he just said, you look like the bad guy in my movie. Do you yeah. want that part? And, and without even saying another word to me, I was just like, yes, I want the part in your movie. I want to be the bad guy in a movie. I don't know what movie. I don't know what the hell it's about. I don't really care, but the answer is yes. <laughs> so that's so that cool. was uh, that was at Kane University that I did a student film. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I found out that in that process that I really enjoyed doing it. And I thought, you know what? Like, if you're going to do something, why not give it a crack and do it right? Because, like, why half-ass it? Right. So I was, uh, I was talking to my mom, and she wanted me to go back to get a physical education degree. Because I had, I had graduated with a communications degree and she said, oh, you know, if you go the phys ed route, it's a good lifestyle. It, it, you know, it's, it's a great um, position, career, this and that. And then I'm like, well, yeah, but I really want to be an actor and I kind of want to go to acting school. So I think there was like a big pause on the phone. And then she's like, well, if that's what you have to do. You have to do. And I was like, it was like a, a huge relief for me to get that wow. encouragement because I knew in my heart, that's what I at least wanted to attempt to do. So right. I went to, I took a, a course at New York Film Academy in 2010. I learned a lot. And, and here's the thing, whether it be the best acting school or the worst, it's really what you, your mentality, what you get out of it. Right. So I was a student of the game. Before I went to acting school, I read books about acting. Michael Caine's acting on film. Oh, yeah. uh, there's, there's a great Larry Moss book, The Intent to Live. Mm -hmm. it's, it really blew my mind. So by the time I got to acting school, I thought, wow, like I'm, I'm, 
I'm going to be the best actor in the class. And whoever's better than me, I'm going to make my best friend and I'm going to learn from them. Mm-hmm. And it was also like the old fashioned, like, okay, I'm the first person there. I'm the last person to leave. Somebody didn't show up. Give me the script. I'll do my best to memorize it and I will jump in. And that's the way I was. Yeah. That's I would hungry. go to New York three times a week and be like, just, you know, with the shitty and grin, forgive my language. I'd be on the path train, like holding on to the sweaty bar. Like I can't wait to go to school tonight. You know, Yeah, yeah. it meant the world to me, dude. And, and when I do the right project, it still does. Yeah. Yeah. That's so great. Wow. I mean, that's just hungry, man. You know, and, and that's, that's the hunger that people have to understand that um, you don't think, you don't think about doing it. You know what I mean? It's, 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 you're doing it all the time. You never yeah. stop. You know, you wake up thinking about it, go to sleep thinking about it. Um, right. Tell me about the roles that you've played. And you've played a lot of, a lot of uh, interesting uh, characters that I've seen. Um, you always bring something different to it. One of the, the, the experiences that I had with, with the first time that we worked together on uh, on a film you you know we had the script we we did some uh, i think maybe we met maybe we met once or something for yeah. uh, for a rehearsal and um you came in with a completely different like it the first take you had a, an accent you went with something completely different and i was just at first it kind of took me aback and i was thinking and then i thought wait a minute i was like no that's that's good. That's like, that to me is like, so then I just, I didn't even say anything. I was just like, yeah, that's, that's what we want to do, you know? And it was just so great. And I, I, it was a short, very, very short film, but I really loved that, that performance you did um, in that film. And um, I wish I could remember the name of it now. Club X. I think I changed the name. Club G, some, some club. It was a club. Uh, oh, um, no, when if, when it actually, I put it out, it was um, something burn. Feel the burn. Feel the burn. Feel the burn. That's what it was. Yeah. Right. Okay. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's talk about that a little bit because you've done a lot of projects, and when I was in, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna full tr- transparency, right? When I, mm. when I was working at um, in in a lot of sh- short things in in New York, I did a lot of school projects, a lot of NYU projects, like the security guard at NYU knew me. So I would go in and go, go to the fourth floor green room and sit there and look at this, whatever. So I did a lot of projects. That, a lot of them didn't come out, right? I have two projects that I shot that you're in, and I have them. They're, they're, they're great. My editing skills suck. You know, it's, <laughs> you know, it's, I, I look at them. I try to the best I can. I'm, um, um, I have good equipment. I have, you know, I, I can I have money to do the, the, the technology part. But the skill of it is really, it's, a, it's an amazing skill. I mean, it is a tremendous thing. So let me ask you a question about when you're working with a team, right? Because one of the things that I fell into was trying to put a team together, you know, and trying to put a team together. Like, you know, our, our mutual friend, Sam, right? Yeah. Sam has managed to put a team together. He's got these great people around him. He's able to you know, do the writing, the directing, and, and get the people together and put these things out. And they're great, you know, and... Um, talk to me about being part of a team and how that reflects on future projects for you. Okay. Uh, that seems like a two or three part question. So I'm going to yeah, try a lot, to a lot there, a lot of meat. <laughs> I'll hit it off the best I can from, uh, from what you said. First, um, I also just want to hit on something. I feel like honorable mention, I should throw out to some training to any actor out there. Uh, also, Stella Adler Acting Studio was a tremendous experience for me with training because that was honestly like one of those things like, oh, you want to be an actor? Here's a cool idea. Memorize all this stuff. Make it work. Because if you don't know your stuff next week, you're not welcome back and you don't get a refund. Wow. So it was kind of like, you know, trial by fire, as they say. And, that, and that's the kind of stuff that's going to happen because in, in real life, you might get a script and I might have to learn 10 pages by tomorrow. And then guess what happens? Five minutes before set, they might say, oh, you know what? There's a rewrite. So go, you know, learn it. And I think Stella was was, uh, instrumental to help me with that. That's awesome. Part two of that question. We'll talk about the short that wound up being called Feel the Burn. Um, See, I go by what I'm influenced by. And I feel like it's important for any artist, especially an actor, to be in tune with not only modern day media, but to look at the greats. And honestly, 
steal from the greats, you know, don't steal a whole performance, but steal bits and pieces, you know? So at that point, I believe it was late 2015 or early 2016, we had worked together for the first time and I was on a Brando kick. So I was watching the movie Dianar. It's a 1950s Marlon Brando performance where he uses a Tennessee accent. And I learn. I tend to use uh, like I. There's different ways to learn accents, and uh, there's a phonetic way that I actually I took a, a course about that. But I go by ear. And um, also another thing is like if you're going to do something, you know, there's different variations of almost any kind of dialect or accent. So as long as you commit to the specific one you choose, mm-hmm. and if you, you and with a comedy you have a little more leeway. So I was kind of using like a Tennessee accent for the character because he felt like, unlike me, who generally takes their time and thinks and speaks slow, like I wanted this character to really honor the the fun material that you wrote. And he was a fast talking guy and he had a story of like the worst day ever being a personal trainer at the gym. So to me, it just sounded funnier playing it serious while using this this comical Southern accent to kind of just highlight the material that you wrote. So thank you for that. And, and I appreciate, you know, the inspiration because it just popped in my head because you could have said, Dan, let's cut it there. And I don't want that nonsense, but you allowed me to roll with it. I <laughs> felt comfortable with you right, right off the bat. And that was a big deal for me. I, I will say actually, uh, be- before we go on, I will say that when I actually do do that a lot, because if I do something, if I think that something is way, not what I was envisioning but i don't think i've ever actually done that with you with anything like literally i think you and i have maybe a a few other actors that i've worked with very few maybe two or three casey mcdougall which i've worked with many times i don't you know there's just when you're directing you and people like that you really want them to come to the table with something that you're not thinking of because that's what makes it interesting for me like i just thought of this character i'm not this character could could live on, you know. I mean, this this, this, this oh, I'd love to see more. Those yeah. two characters could actually just keep going. I could totally see them doing a bunch of stuff together. So for me to see the actual character suddenly be there, and I'm like, oh shit! I'm like, wow, okay. You know, I was thinking something completely different, but now I think that's it. Um, it's very, very, very cool. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, please. Um, I agree. You know, with, with something like that, it was just a fun kind of one-off shoot but i i remember on the day we thought like wow that these these two characters could have easily had like a spin-off web series type of thing that that would have been an interesting dynamic and you never know what the future holds so we might just see that yeah. to answer your question the last question about the collaborative nature of groups that i'm associated with um it's a huge influence because knowing that you have people you trust, knowing that you have talented people in place in the different aspects of filmmaking is a beautiful feeling because it's like, okay, if I want to make a project, I don't want to do it poorly. So I want to have the right person. So Narrowbridge Films, which is a Bayonne film company, if you're not familiar with, uh, founded by Sam and Isaac Latinsky. I've been a part of it from day one. We've done some good stuff in the past. We got some good stuff presently. And the future, I think, is going to be like, up here so yeah. we have people like uh, my uh, dear friend joey mosca who does sound but he mm-hmm. also directs he also does lights so you have technical aspects covered you know sam mm-hmm. and isaac are also writers in addition to actors i do some writing and producing myself even direct here and there and uh as we know i uh, love embarrassing myself with silly characters so that is like my contribution to the organization mm-hmm. so in between projects that I'm auditioning for, because sometimes it's a waiting game. Like if we're going to reflect on the present moment, the COVID is obviously stopping, unfortunately, all the artistic community. So I have a few projects that I booked in pre-production, but who knows when we're actually going to be able to film them. Right. So the beauty of working with a hometown company or say like working with you and Frank, and you guys are also you know super talented too. It's like, you know that, you're going to have fun. You know that you could step out of your comfort zone and try something differently. You know, right. Like that HBO may not say, Oh yeah, I don't know if we need you to, they may not trust me to lose 10 pounds and use a Southern accent or, you know, all of a sudden go be a German or something. But if I'm writing my own material, 
I'm going to stretch my, my, um, you know, acting muscle and, and really try to push the envelope because the worst case scenario is that it fails and I'm not afraid of failure. And I think, um, I think we just have to embrace failure. You know, I don't know who said it. I'm not trying to take anyone's quotes away, but if you're not getting rejected on a somewhat daily basis, you're not shooting high enough. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of a, a, a kind of a well-known thing for any artist, really, you know, you mm -hmm. have to be a, you know, there was that little clip on um, Steve Martin when he was talking about his uh, stand up comedy and his writing and, when he was just coming up in the seventies, you know, somebody said to him, you know, you should probably just stick to writing, you know, the stand up comedy thing. I don't think it's working, you know, and, and he, you know, he talks in uh, one of those master classes. Uh, he just says, you know, he's oh great. I got my badge. I got my badge of honor. You know, I got my, <laughs> I got my rejection, you know, now everything is fine. I can just keep going. You know, he turned out to be one of the biggest comedians of all time. Um, Oh, I love yeah. that. Let, let, let me step in on that. Um, Steve Martin has, I think, like the best quote ever where he says, like, you be so good, they can't ignore you. Right. And that's the only real way to work your way up, because, you know, if there is a, you know, path like a, a speed road to the top, I certainly did not take it and I'm not taking it now, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I have taken what I have and the projects that I've done and I've you know, methodically worked my way up. I, I, I never knew anybody. I was the kind of person like I have a dream and I have to start at the bottom and that's cool because I will be that first generation entrepreneur that, you know, I earned everything. I, it wasn't like, Oh cool. You know, mommy and daddy, and I'm not crapping on anybody that has connections. God bless them. Cause they don't have to, you know, work as hard. But, um, and I never had that connection. I had to earn it. I had to go to school and become friends with filmmakers and write my own films. And, and I was starting to, you know, make better connections and do stronger work through like just a uh, hustle and through whatever, you know, God given talent I have and, and whatever uh, luck I get along the way. Yeah. But in the terms of social media, here, here's a cool thing. What we were just talking about rejection. And I think this is important for anybody that's actually my Facebook friend to know. And I might have said it before in a funny post or just to reiterate. Not every day is awesome. Um, not every day is I got accepted to a film festival or I got nominated for a, an award or I won an acting accolade. There are a lot of days where I get an email. It's like, sorry, we went in a different creative direction or you just don't hear back at all. And then you look at the IMDb page and you see somebody else got the part that you were really hoping for. Right. What do I do, John? I simply keep it positive. I only post the good stuff because you probably don't want to hear about it no more than I want to go on Facebook and see somebody saying, oh, stuck in traffic. <laughs> okay, what am I supposed to say? So you sorry. Gotta, you know, you know people are. have real issues, you know. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, if, if something bad happened in someone's life, like, yep, yeah, you know, social media is comforting and you could post about it. And I hope people do, you know, give them the proper attention that they deserve. But I'm not going to go on Facebook and complain because I didn't get a part or because it's been a month since I landed a new opportunity, but I've been lucky and I've been assertive. So if I send all my material to many different film festivals and I really like learn how to play the game, it, it's like then more opportunities are happening because people see my professionalism. You know, I'm going to get there on time. You know, I'm going to know my material. You know, I'm going to bring something to the table and I'm not asking for anything. I'm not asking for a favor. I I'm going to give you a good performance. If I sign on to your project, well, you know, whatever the deal may be, I, I'm not going to do something anymore if it's not like a full commitment. So for the Facebook world, it's not always sunshine and rainbows. I just try to keep the positive things posted on here. Pictures of me and my girlfriend, pictures of my family, um, and whatever good is happening with my film career, or I will repost you know, the accomplishments of other friends and filmmakers because this is the industry that I've chosen. Mm -hmm. This is the industry that I will succeed at, and this is uh, something that I really love doing. Yeah. That's awesome. Let me ask you a question. Um, do you think that um, someone who built a career from nothing, you know, basically, like you said, you didn't know anybody, you know, do you think that that makes you a better actor? 
Well, there's two different schools of thought on that. Uh, one is, you know, you're born with the ability to act. And I partially believe that, but I also believe that anybody, literally anybody who is a human being could learn how to channel their emotions and study the craft and really find their way. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think it's a mixture of both. Um, but having no experience and, and not coming from a family of performers or anything, I just think it was something uh, important for me to pursue because at the end of the day, I really can't see long term doing anything else. Like, obviously, I do what I have to do to, uh, you know, supplement my income like most artists. But my, dr my dream, my vision, my stubbornness is to be a successful character actor and to produce and write and be in the film business. And I'm too stubborn to stop that and I'm starting to get pretty good at it. So I'm not going to stop. And I think if it doesn't make me a better actor, it makes me a hungrier actor, which kind of forces me to maybe dig a little bit deeper and make a little bit better choices because I'm not going to dial something in because any chance you get in this business could be your last chance. Mm -hmm. So when I get an opportunity, I'm going to be, open-minded like I am and I go in there and I try to just do my best and maybe uh for no reason add you know a little quirk to something that somebody else wouldn't have thought of because that's just the way I experience it in my head which is often the dangerous playground <laughs> um you are definitely a a, a great actor and you're an award-winning actor um every time I go on there I see all you know your always you know you've been nominated you've won you know and it's it's exciting for me because i am one of those guys you know and people sometimes i i, I think there's they think that there's a man there's some cynicism when i when i say something like that like i sincerely feel so much joy when an artist is doing well and i've i've met you know hundreds of artists maybe thousands at this point um where you know not all of them unfortunately have made it and that hurts it hurts just as much and i feel great when they actually are successful so to see you rising and to see you doing your thing you know it's for me it's an honor to to see your work and it's it's actually an honor to to be able to actually talk to you about it and to get your insight because i think it's so valuable for other young um artists not even just actors really just artists you know because your attitude and your 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 viewpoints are exactly what an artist needs to hear but it's so important for you to be out there and, and doing exactly what you're doing and, and um, very, very empowering too. You know, it, it does give you a sense of empowering. Now you, you're, you're building a resume, right? Yeah. Um, but your resume is also your reputation, you know, and that's what you were talking about earlier. You know, you know, people know you're going to be on time that, you know, you're going to know your lines. They know you're going to have studied the character. You're going to ask questions. You're going to bring something to the table that's very unique and different. Um, tell me a little bit about your process. You get a script. You you know, I, I read a thing about, uh, what's his name? Silence of the Lambs. Anthony uh, Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins. He gets a script and he reads it uh, like 50 times in a row. He reads it 50 mm -hmm. times in a row. That's his first thing. And then he reads it another 50 times, and he, but he does notes. He takes notes on the next 50 times. So, that's a process I'm assuming. Um, there's a lot of different, you know, methods. There's no real right or wrong way as long as you can actually, what, what's your process? Okay. I will answer that question for you. And first let me say thank you for, uh, for acknowledging, you know, that I've had some artistic success and I think that that's a meaningful thing as anybody that takes their craft seriously are awards the best thing in the world. No, not at all, but it does, it validates you a little bit. It makes you feel good because it just shows that, you know, you are excelling in your chosen field. Now, whether it be you're, you're a teacher or whether it be, you know, you're a scientist, you know, there are awards in, in any kind of career mm -hmm. and that is great. And I appreciate the accolade, but it's not why I do it because I went like nine years of working my ass off without getting anything. Mm -hmm. And then it's just been like, you know, it was, uh, one opportunity came along and, and, uh, and I just felt like it was thrown into this world. And to me, the best part is 
the idea of networking because what is the idea of award awards come from film festivals right mm. or or they come from some kind of industry uh, like get together so while you're there it's not about the trophy or about the nomination it's about showing other people in that room that hey i'm in this room i deserve to be here and so do you you're in this room and let's work together and right. when i say it john i mean it because i when i worked with a lot of different people like who was a stranger one day i might collaborate with the next week or somebody mm -hmm. hires me to act or somebody asks me if i know any talented actresses and i will always throw a few names out there because i want to help even if it's like oh you know a good sound guy i'll recommend somebody i don't want to be like well I could do it. Like, no, it, it's a collaborative effort. And it, my goal is to um, just book more work because that's what I want to be doing. I want to be constantly working and I, I want to be successful in terms of, you know, having that be my only job. And that is something that I'm always working towards. And I feel like it's just a matter of time before one or several of the projects I've either done or I'm going to do soon takes off and then it just puts me on a different uh, bracket where it allows me to be uh, have more financial freedom and just pursue it as a full-time thing where I feel like is coming soon. But in the meantime, I'm just trying to enjoy the moment and um, just take it all in because it, it's uh, it's been a whirlwind in the last year or two. I've been fortunate enough to, to go to these events and I've been very lucky to get some to get some nominations and some victories for my work, you know, for my character work, which, uh, which makes me really happy. So, um, and, and I very. promote it. Thank you. And I appreciate that you appreciate it because I'm not promoting it. I'm not trying to put on Facebook. Oh, I'm so awesome. I want something. No, it's not about that. No. It's, it's as simple as this. It's I'm showing other producers, other writers, other filmmakers that I'm not sitting on my ass. So right. they know. And then if I send you an email and then I with a nice padded resume, you see like, hey, you know what? This guy, this guy from Bayonne that I've never heard of deserves a chance in my film. And then all of a sudden you start to see the same people at these events and you know that you're doing well because there's so many talented artists at every level of filmmaking. They go to award shows and they go to film festivals and they show their work and the smart ones are not there to just party and be full yeah. of themselves. The, the good, great artists are the ones that are exchanging contact information and, um, and worried watch. about the next project because yeah. it's always about the project. So yeah. that's what I just wanted to put out there. Um, yeah. So it's it really about making connections. Yeah, it also validates the film, you know, and all the actors and the producers. And, you of know, what course. I mean? so it's like, you get to acknowledge well, everybody. Yeah, it's, it's a wonderful thing. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry. So yeah, I didn't answer your question. Uh, my process. Every character is different. Um, I kind of take everything that I've learned, whether it be the stuff I've learned through school or from reading or just some of the own little tool bag of acting that I've just acquired over the years. And, um, I will just simply look at the script, you know, and there was a, like a good example that they say that if you're playing a character that's been broken hearted, most people have at some point so you can maybe draw upon that to mm -hmm. portray that accurately on film or on stage other times you might get cast as the king of england now we both know i've never been royalty <laughs> being on the show is the closest thing i've, I've had to royalty so i thank you for that but <laughs> but so where do you go sometimes sometimes you have to just take you know you have to do your research and you have to use your imagination and you just have to really um just trying to dig into it and, and and you have to take chances and uh, you know old school choice making and just really swing for the fence and it doesn't always work you know mm -hmm. if i've had success i've also had a lot of failure and i'm not afraid to admit that there's been some projects that just fell by the wayside and uh i take it personally because i think that you know i'm to blame even if i wasn't technically the person to blame in my mind you know, if it could have been better than it should have been, then I, you know, I'll take responsibility for that. And um, I just, I really think about my, whatever I'm working on at the moment, you know, I really want to dig away. So my preparation is not necessarily reading 
the script a million times, but I internalize it enough. Uh, Ron Burris, who's, who's a fantastic uh, teacher from Stella Adler Acting Studio, who actually worked with the real Stella Adler back in the day, who was Marlon Brando's teacher. Wow. Ron said that an idea is, I remember this clear, even though it was like seven years ago, he said, read the script seven times so the script works on you before you get a chance to work on the script. Hmm. So I thought that was a cool concept. I don't always follow it, uh, but um, I think that's good to know. Um, I like to think about also what I want to do. Sometimes it's a very selfish choice. I think like, well, I haven't done that. And you have to, and I ask myself a couple of questions with a character. Does it serve the character and does it, is it relevant in the screenplay? Because, you know, you can't just do something for the sake of it and eat the scenery, you know? Right. Right. It's tempting, especially playing a fun role. It's very tempting to just try to be, um, you know, quirky or or weird or, or like, you know, eat the scenery for no reason. But you have to think like, am I serving the material and yeah. is it relevant within the context of the writing? Because as a screenwriter myself, I respect the hell out of writers because it's not like they'd make it up and they print it like they probably did like 10 versions of it mm. or maybe maybe 20, maybe I'm reading your 15th draft and I, who the hell am I to just change it? Unless right. of course I take a chance. And that's the beauty of doing something on film as we both know. And if you're not under a crazy time restraint, then you could try it a few different ways. And just like, just simply like, I'm not afraid of getting rejected. I'm not afraid of a director saying cut. What the hell was that? Don't do that. Go back to the material. You know? Right. <laughs> so I think you have to just have fun. And sometimes, you know, that approach just um, just really works out, and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Um, we were talking a little bit about the uh, the networking element of it, mm -hmm. and it's such a, it's, it is such a huge, huge, um, I mean, you were here because we networked. I don't, I don't even know how. I think I reached out to you, and you were a gentleman. You're like, cool, yeah, I'll meet up with you sometime. And we, yeah. we went to your office, and we sat down and had a cup of coffee, and um, – we said, sure, let's let's work together. And All next right. thing you know, you had a script for me. Yeah. So, I mean, they're, you know, for me, it's, a, you know, people talk about, oh, the luck, you know, the guy was lucky or whatever. And it's just so much of preparation, you know, that whole thing about, you know, you, when luck, what is it? Uh, when you're prepared, luck comes, whatever it is, or right. whatever that quote I know, is. I know what you're saying. Yeah, whatever that quote is. <laughs> but it's so, it's so true, like, because, you know, I think about the times of, that I was really prepared for something. And, you know, like, like last, well, last summer, uh, I signed with Avanti, right. Avanti talent. It was the first time I ever signed with an agency and it was, it was, it was exciting. It was nerve wracking. But when I went there, you know, and I might have told the story before, so I'll probably my last time telling the story on the show, but, um, I think it's relevant because I think it does show when you're putting out enough content and you're actually working and, and, and for somebody like me, that I know I'm not going to get a role, a leading role. You know, I know it's going to be, I'm going to pay a, a quirky kind of a, you know, I play a lot of sympathetic mailroom guys. You know, I had a film that went to Cannes. That was, I was a mailroom guy. It was very quiet role. You know, it was, uh, um, and, and so it was fine. But so I decided to, to start writing my own things and then putting myself in situations where I didn't think I would be put in or be cast. And maybe I could, maybe I don't, but I, that was, that wasn't the, the purpose of it. Right. And right. when I went there, my, my agent now, you know, he kind of just turned to this computer and he was like, all right, so, you know, thanks for coming in. He goes, so where can I see you? And he turns to his computer and he just says, where can I see you? And I start like sweating, you know, I'm like, cause he, now he wants to go on the computer and, and look at some stuff. So he did. And luckily after he went on, I realized, oh, okay. I had my, my website. I had like six or seven films that I wrote and was, I was in, I had a reel, I had, you know, I was prepared, you know? Um, and he actually just offered me a, a contract, you know, about an hour later after meeting, you know, it was like, wow. and you know, he said, take it home, have your lawyer, you know, I don't have a lawyer. <laughs> He's like, have your lawyer look at it and all this stuff. And, uh, but I did call my last agent and asked him about it. And he, uh, he validated, he said, definitely a good move that's a good company so um but it was because of preparation and it was because of a lot of networking because i would i wouldn't be able to get these films done if i didn't go out and network with people you know and that to me is like a really key thing and um one of the the um amazing things about you 
is that the characters that you they're all they're all you, but they're all not you. I mean, obviously, because they're your characters, but they're all actually very, very unique in their own, in their own, you know, uh, just in their own way. What, what character do you remember that you wished you could actually just keep playing? Wow. First of all, uh, congratulations to you. That's awesome that you're part of that agency. Oh, thank you. Um, can you see me right now? Because I can't see you. I'm. I'm here. Okay. Um, All right. As long as you can see me, it's okay. I, yeah, I can I hear see you. you and, uh, yeah. Your All phone right. maybe, maybe shut down or something. It's possible. As long as I can hear that, that lovely voice of yours, I'm okay. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> um, wow. Uh, that's, that's a cool question, actually, because I would say one of my favorite characters to play would be uh, is a Tony. Uh, his name is Tony Appalicchio. So I've got to play him twice. Once in a cult zombie film Red Scare with Narrowbridge Films. Mm -hmm. And then a few years later in the most recent Narrowbridge film, well, the most recently released Narrowbridge film, Yellow Scare, I got to revisit the character towards the end of the picture. Now, a quick plug on Yellow Scare. Um, it's been successful. We won a few awards at the prestigious Golden Door International Film Festival, mm -hmm. which was 2018. It won Best Comedy. I was blessed to win Best Supporting Actor in a feature for that role. And um, in the film, I actually play the character's uh, father, too. So it was kind of there, – there's time travel aspects of it. It's kind of uh, – it's a fun period piece to watch. So Tony is basically – a 1950s greaser, but I, I normally don't reveal my character uh, inner like thoughts or, or the process all the time. So, but I'll tell you because you're asking because you're a, you're an actor yourself. Um, my thing was, you know, the character, his secret, and it's always cool to have like a secret for your character. Mm. His secret was he walks around. He's got he's got this big grin on his face, and he always seems like. He's in a good mood, even though he's sometimes around like deadly circumstances or, or whatever. It's because he thinks deep down that he's Superman. So he's invincible. Mm. Of course, he's just a man and he's a little bit slow. But, um, you know, he's this 1950s greaser with his hair slicked back and his uh, unfiltered cigarettes and um, his baseball bat that he likes to kill zombies with and make inappropriate jokes with, which is always fun to be anti-PC. Yeah. And he's a bit of a ladies man. So it's kind of a fun character to play. Like he really just uh, another influence for, for him was uh, a young Mickey Rourke, you know, talking about like using inspiration from other films. Like I was talking about Brando and Sayonara for the film we did mm. for Red Scare and for Yellow Scare. Uh, one of my, my biggest inspirations to portray Tony was the young Mickey Rourke from like, you know, the eighties, uh, specifically like Rumblefish, where he just oh, yeah. takes his voice up a couple of nights. So when he's talking, he just kind of takes his time and uh, touches his face a lot. And uh, I don't think it would be okay in the times of Corona to keep doing this, but uh, <laughs> he's just kind of a cool cat, you know? That's awesome. And just a simple thing like that, man. It's just like, wait, it just, it completely changes the material. And, uh, yeah. Narrow Bridge has always been kind to me that, you know, they allow me to indulge with these characters and I just, you know, take it as far as they allow me mm -hmm. and I have fun and, and I get to improv. And I, and I think that that's also part of my thing when I'm afforded to, obviously it doesn't work on stage, but uh, if I'm given the opportunity and I work with an open-minded director and there's time, of course, you know, if we're running short on time, as you know, any film set tends to, then I try to stay on book. But for the most part, uh, you just got to go for it sometimes. Have you ever got a role and you said, no, I can't do this? Because uh, are you asking I, why I declined it because of the material? Any reason. Just you looked at it and you thought the material maybe is not good enough or the character is not interesting enough. Well, I mean, I've done it for, for business reasons. So I'm trying to take myself more serious in the last couple of years as a businessman as well. Mm. So I'm not always interested in if a filmmaker and, and I'm not trying to, to be a big shot. So I won't say to somebody like, oh, well, I deserve more or this is 
not this is beneath me because I don't believe that at all. But I, I think sometimes, you know, I will ask a lot of questions. And I think any artist that takes themselves seriously should do so. And a few of them being the, the simple things, um, you know, what, um, where do you see this film going? Uh, what technology are you using? Who else is attached to the project? You know, I want to be in a film where other actors are actually actors. You know, I, I, I'm not a big fan of, of jumping into a film production where it's like, oh, cool. Like, you know, my brother is holding the sound mic. Like, <laughs> you know, and I've done them and I'm, I'm not, and I'm not trying to shit on those no, projects. I, I know exactly what you mean. I know. Me, that's where I started. You know, I started with, with a handheld camera in the woods of Cranford, you know, 11 years ago. And, I, and in my mind, I was Johnny Depp. I was having the time of my life. So right. I would never crap or, I would never discourage any kid out there with a camera that wants to go do a terrible Irish accent in the woods because I've been that guy. Right. So good <laughs> for you and go, go make it. And maybe you'll beat me to the Oscars. But for now I try to look at it like, okay, is this going to go somewhere? Does the filmmaker take their craft as serious as I take mine? Right. Right. So there have been a few times where in my mind, I didn't get back, um, the right answers to those questions you know i won't name names because i i don't like to you know produce any kind of negativity of course but I, i've one gentleman said to me like oh no i I'm, I'm not gonna submit it anywhere i think i'm gonna put it on youtube and um <laughs> yeah no i don't know i don't even no, like i don't do imdb or or anything like that and, and it was <laughs> like oh it's like well we don't thank you for your offer but you know i want to make films that you know, if I'm going to put the work in at the very least, man, like send it to send it to a film festival or, or um, you know, give me the character of a lifetime or, you right. know, some, something of note or, you know, actors, especially I can only speak for myself. But I mean, we want to sink our teeth into something and I, I just want the opportunity to showcase, you know, my passion. So if I can't do that then, you know, I, I would have to say no to a handful right. of projects. Right. And I think also when you're, when you've done a lot of work now and you, you, you're mm -hmm. actually, uh, you know, in, in demand on, you know, with narrow bridge and, and other, and you, and you're award winning, you do have to start looking at your career more seriously. And yes, you can do a project, you know, that, that actually is someone that's serious about it and, and it's going to work on it. Um, but you also want to make sure that you're not um, being you. Sorry about that. My sound. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, I can't hear you now. Hold on. <laughs> I think you muted yourself. Nope, can't hear you. You try to troubleshoot that and I'll just I'll just talk. <laughs> so I, I think what I was uh um, I can't hear you. It says, can you, your guest, it closed. Okay, it, sa it says that you muted yourself on my end, so somewhere on there, there should be a, a can you hear me? <laughs> it's all good, we got time. Let me just say hello to some people. Hey, what's up, Matt? Thank you very much for tuning in. Appreciate you. Can you hear me, Dan? Okay. So 
Um, if you'd like to just uh, log out and come right back in again on the same link, I'll still just be here and I'll just talk a little bit more. Yes. So, yes, Lily, thank you so much. Um, yeah, we're uh, we had a little technical difficulty here, but uh, Dan's gonna come right back, and I'm gonna continue uh, talking. So, thank you. Um, so, one of the things that we were talking about was the um, getting involved in a project that's actually being taken. Uh, oh, here's Dan. That was fast. Oh wow! I could actually see you again. Wow, that was fast. Cool. All right. Sorry about that. No, nah, it's all good. It's all good. I was, uh, um, let me get rid of, uh, you have two people on here. So there you are. All right, cool. Awesome. So, yeah. So, I mean, we were talking basically about, you know, getting involved in projects that you knew were going to go somewhere and stuff, you sure. know, um, and as a filmmaker, you know, and I, and I do take things seriously, you know, and I'm pretty open about my whole life. Like, I mean, you see me on social media. I'm not really, I don't, I mean, I, not everything obviously, but I do, uh, live pretty open and one of the things that i have talked about is as a filmmaker the struggles that i've had personally in uh trying to get certain projects completed because i seem to be really good at the casting you know uh i write i do a lot of uh things that um i feel comfortable with i have tremendous tremendous talent you being one of the most talented people i've ever worked with and for me it's like you know i want to get these projects done and when you meet an editor and you meet somebody, you know, you get and and it falls, the relationship falls, uh, falls out, you know, um, hey, Michael Simon Hall. Thank you. Um, it really hurts because not only is the project at a standstill for me, it's at a standstill for everyone else. It doesn't bother me as much as it bothers me that it, it's everyone else is, is stopped. So, for, you know, that, so just just from me to you, you know, I apologize that I know I have. Um, you know, we, I haven't put out those, uh, those films. Um, some of them are edited. I have pieces edited. I spoke to a couple, <laughs> it's going to get done. I promise you. Um, and this year was the year to, uh, to get those done. I was going to pay somebody to do it. And then this COVID thing happened and, uh, and then he had a fire and uh, anyway, all this stuff happened. So it's just one of those weird things. What do you, what do you, what do you do? Like when you run into a certain, um, like how easy is it for you to kind of maneuver through the industry? Do you have, is it, do you have barriers? Uh, is it your own barriers or is it industry barriers? What, what is your next step that you're trying to get to that maybe you feel you got to push? Uh, first, let me say that you don't owe me an apology at all. I know that the projects oh. we did, dude, I know they're going to be good. And I also know that quality work takes time. Believe me, uh, a quick little backstory is that a few Two projects, two of my favorite performances in addition to Yellow Scare was one was called Crazy Mike, a comedy, and another one called Tell Me Something Good. Both have recently been winning awards. John, I did these projects a long time ago. I won't say how long ago, but long enough ago where they were almost like just discarded. And then I decided like, why just leave it on a YouTube link? Why would I sabotage myself the way I get mad when someone else sabotaged me? I have control of this film. Mm. So I took it upon myself to not wait for anybody to submit it for me. I, I created a film freeway link. As you see, I'm not too technically savvy. So, you know, <laughs> I had to, you know, figure this stuff out. And it was simple as well. You just make a resume or whatever, and you just upload your link, and then you send it to festivals. And I started taking these films that I was proud of, but never had really seen the light of day. And uh, I've been running with them, and I'm very happy to tell you as you've seen that they've been doing well and it just encourages me to really like work for myself. And yeah. I think it's encouraging to you too, because it doesn't matter if we filmed uh, end on that day or uh, feel the burn. And uh, there's a, there's another one in there too. The mafia one. Oh, with listen, the, Charlie. Yeah. Charlie, listen, Charlie with uh, a lot of talented people like uh, yeah. that Richard came out Meyer, really good. He's a great guy. Yeah. yeah that was really yeah, good. Um, I, I, yeah, I saw a, a, a bit of it and i really enjoyed it so when it comes out it comes out no rush believe me everything has its time for a reason all right well, but, i appreciate um, you saying that of course my friends and believe me um in this industry there, there's where i am which is 
where I, I feel like I've come a long way from where I started, but I'm also by no means where I want to go and where I will go. I'm confident enough to know I'm going to get to where I want. And that's simply working regularly and, you know, hopefully, you know, doing quality work with just great artists. And I'm starting to meet a lot of these people at film festivals. I've already met some really great actors and filmmakers and screenwriters at another group that I, that I work with on an almost regular uh, weekly basis. They're a part of the Brazen Giant Ensemble. Mm. And that is a New York affiliation where these artists get together, obviously on Zoom recently because of the health circumstances. But when real life happens again, hopefully soon, we meet and we work on original material and filmmakers will say, hey, Dan, read this part. And then I read it and then we do it in class. And not only it helps them hear it out loud, but if I do a good job, then maybe I get the part in real life when they actually film it. That's awesome. So I have like a huge respect for everybody at the Brazen Giant Ensemble. So a special shout out to my dear friends, uh, Bill Sorvino and Christian Kyber, who are the founders and to all the other actors and actresses. And there are a lot of very talented women uh, involved with that as well, like uh, Carrie McCann, um, Brooke Hover, just to name a couple, and, and uh, also a couple of the uh, the talented women at at Narrow Bridge, like uh, Maggie Perez and my own girlfriend Jaylene Perez, who actually I recently did a short film with. But I think she'll be the one to tell you all about it in a, a couple of weeks. Yes, yes, on the uh, I think it's the. Uh... 18th. Right. <laughs> Looking you know, forward to um, it. Basically, it hasn't been easy for me because it, at sometimes I, what I tend to do and, and have done is sometimes work sideways. So it's like I will, I'll get an opportunity and then just do whatever I can because as an actor, you know, at the end of the day, actors want to act, mm -hmm. you know. So we tend to sometimes move sideways where it's like, cool, you're getting roles. So now I'm getting roles. Now literally whatever role you give me for, for a while, I was like, cool, I just want to be an actor. I want to do this. I book this. I book this. Then it's like, wait up. I want to do meaningful projects. I want to do films that I actually believe in that I'm fully invested in. So at this point, you know, that you, you reach a level where you start to take it a little bit more seriously and, and treat yourself as its own commodity and as a business, you know, mm -hmm. I build up my social media, you know, I, I'm very uh, open on Facebook with my career, with my materials. Uh, I'm trying to work on my uh, Instagram and Twitter, like Instagram. I have my own hashtag, Daniel Michael Gregory, which I put on every single post as obnoxious as it may mm -hmm. seem. It actually <laughs> helps me like get a little oh, yeah. bit of a following. And, yeah. and just like I follow anybody else that takes their career seriously. And, and, you know, it's something that, that, that is helpful for an artist in this day mm -hmm. and age you have to be out there and you have to be showing people what you're doing. So yeah. when I got to that level, which is kind of where I am now, I feel like I'm really just, you know, getting to the meat of things and I'm meeting really cool people. So uh, the next level to answer your question, I believe is where, where I want to go is, is I think I'm getting closer to that. And I think um, I'm, I'm taking steps every day because whether it be, through my own connections or whether it be uh, through third parties. I, I can't discuss that right now because I'm in talk with, um, with a specific uh, company right now that I, that I may wind up signing with. Mm -hmm. I, I, if, if we spoke like a week or so later, I'd probably tell you more details, but nothing, nothing's official yet. So yeah, I, yeah. I might have some good news on that front. That's awesome. But, Regardless, thank you. Regardless of representation, you know, I'm always working and I am fearless when it comes mm -hmm. to pursuing roles. I will DM or private message a director I've never met, never worked with simply because I want to be on their new film. And even if nine out of 10 directors tell me to, you know, take a hike, maybe one of them is like, all right, cool, audition. So right. if I do half a decent job, I not like, I prefer to audition in person. That's just kind of off topic, but. Right. Um, if well, I get a role, I get a role, and sometimes you get lucky. But it, you said it before: when 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 preparation meets opportunity, magic happens. Right, right. That's you what know. I was trying to say. <laughs> yeah, you know, you said it perfectly, and, and I and I completely connect with that. Um, most recently, before Corona, I worked on a project. I had auditioned in New York for, and I was. I feel like I was bombing in the audition room because there was like four people in there and they never looked up from their phones. So 
<laughs> the last I knew this was going to be my last take. I'm surprised they gave me like a fourth take. And I just put this obnoxious character spin on it. And it was so over the top and silly, but everybody looked up like, like they had just seen a miracle. And it was like, wait, what, would, what, what the hell would, was that? Why did he do that? And then sure enough, I was offered a part, you know, not a huge part, but still yeah. in a feature film, working with people you've never met before, it's a good yeah. feeling. Right. Wow. Well, that's awesome. Thank you. I took that enthusiasm, not really knowing who I was working with. And the night before production, I get on a call sheet that I know I'm, I'm going to be on the same call sheet with Oscar nominated actor Eric Roberts. And I'm like, whoa, I've, mm -hmm. I've, this is like some kind of vision board coming true. It's some kind of manifestation of greatness because mm -hmm. I had always been a huge fan of Pope of Greenwich Village with Mickey Rourke and Eric Roberts. And now oh, I'm yeah. going to meet Eric Roberts. So Mickey Rourke, I'm, I hope to work with you sometime, buddy. Yeah, yeah I heard so, he's, uh, he's good yeah, too. We, it was cool. We didn't have a scene together, but he was on set. So I just shamelessly like in ran up to him and I'm just like, Hey, and I, you know, I started to sound like an idiot again. I was able to finally get out. Um, Hey, uh, I'm, I'm a, my name's Dan Gregory. I'm, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. And uh, it's so cool to be on the same film with you. And uh, you know, it's just awesome to meet you. And he's like, Hey, Dan Gregory, nice <laughs> to meet you. And I was like, cool. And then I'm like, I, and then he walked away and then I'm like, I didn't get a picture. So my, my, um, my, my fellow actor looked at me, he's like, you have about another 10 seconds before it's really weird to ask him for a picture. <laughs> so I just run next to like the, the trailers were like right there and I got him right before he ran into a trailer. And I'm just like, uh, Mr. Roberts, you know, he's like, you want a picture? And then he just stood next to me and, we, and he made it super comfortable. And we took like a bunch of selfies and I was like, yeah. like this fan girl, like, dude, we're supposed to be coworkers, but I clearly <laughs> spazzed out and uh, made a fool of myself. But yeah. I was so happy to be like, Hey, guess what? You know, I, I'm not just some, uh, some punk. I'm, I'm doing this movie with, with, uh, right. with some really cool people, including this fantastic director, Jack Andrew Cook. Um, Trust me, he, he's an up-and-coming director. Um, I just auditioned for one of his newer projects, so hopefully good news soon on that front. That's and so cool. uh, and that, that's how it happens because all these cool people I met on that set, like, I want to work with them again. And right. and I mean it. Like, I'm genuinely saying that. Like, I really do. Like, I hope we could all collaborate. And anybody that takes himself seriously, I take seriously and vice versa. Yeah. And also on set, it's uh, they feel... If, if you're comfortable on set and they like how you work on set, they're going to call you back. You know what I mean? It's, it's just, that's just the way it is. And, you know, it's happened a lot of times where you just have a good experience. You you know, you don't, you know, cause I, you know, I've done some little things, a lot of little things, but you hear like to these actors that get this stuff and, and they're, they have decent roles, but they're in very, interruptive you know they they interrupt they're making jokes they're just way too they're just happy to be there you know there's this weird kind of thing and and i've seen it all too often you know where we're on on films you see the ones that are get so nervous and, and the ones that are sincerely nervous that are just really happy to be there do a great job and then there's the ones that are just over the top crazy and 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 you have to run into those kind of things and i think networking is a wonderful thing because you, you get to meet, I was just telling my wife today, I was like, you know, something about crazy people that I actually like, 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 it's like, I just like, I don't know, not that you're crazy, but like, I just like talking to people that are eccentric and, um, you know, and a little bit, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm kind of like loony myself, but uh, my kids can tell you that, but you know, I'm, I just feel, I just feel that it, it's, People that really are not don't take themselves so seriously, you know what I mean? That they're out there, they're willing to enjoy life, they're willing to take risks. Like that fourth take that you took there, you took a risk. Big you time took a risk, you know. And that's that's the kind of thing. Let, let's talk a little bit about that. I don't know how much you know. We we've got an hour now. I don't want I don't want to wear you out, but if you got a few more minutes, I want to ask you a few more things. No, I literally have nothing to do. Okay, <laughs> so let's talk. Um, let's talk about auditioning because you were talking about auditioning a little bit and what's your experience with auditioning? What, you know, I, I, I have my own views on it, but I'm going to let you go first on what you think of the process of auditioning. Okay. Um, 
I read a book, a Heath Ledger book, and I kind of agree with him that it's like it, it's a very strange process. And I don't really believe it's a great measure of someone's talent because there are people that could give the best audition and then freeze up on set. And then there are people who give a mediocre or outright terrible audition that are really fantastic actors. So it's just it, it's one of these huge learning curves for me. And it's just it's I, I hate the phrase the new norm, but. It was kind of catching on before with the video auditioning, but especially now in the world we live in, like it's just easier, it's faster, it's cheaper to quickly send a video audition. It has its mm -hmm. ups and downs. Like obviously if you're on a video audition, you could do like 10 takes and 10 variations, but is the casting director want going to want to watch 10 different takes with 10 right. different characters? Probably not. Right. My thoughts on auditioning are I'd rather be in the room because one thing I learned years ago, and this helps not only in acting, but other aspects of life is to just simply be coachable. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that we all have people we were, we report to our boss, the director, the producer, whoever we, everyone answers to somebody. Right. Mm -hmm. And if somebody says, Hey, that was good, but could you just be a little bit louder or, could you try that again and give me a specific, um, you know, action to play or a different directive or a different uh, objective to, to portray on camera? And I'm going to do it. I'm going to do what you ask me to do or I'm going to, you know, use, you know, whatever talent I have to try to make that happen for you. Right. So I prefer to audition in person given the opportunity. And uh, I hope to be in a better position sooner than later to uh audition in person for uh, bigger projects. And I don't necessarily mean better projects because there is a ton of indie projects that are probably just as good as this Hollywood stuff, but mm -hmm. I want to be in that position and, and I'm manifesting that I will be to, uh, to be, you know, opening yeah. bigger doors and auditioning for, uh, you know, well-known directors and, and really just, you know, showing everybody what this, this dude from Bayonne is made out of. Yeah, awesome. And you're gonna, you definitely, you're doing the right things. I mean, there's, you know, it's like you're gonna get there for sure. Um, Thank you. My, you're welcome. My take on auditions has always been, um, it's just a weird process. You know, what I mean, you're right. It doesn't measure really a person's talent. I think that what it does, you know, there's also like another, another, and there's a documentary. I don't know if you ever saw it. It's called, um, the documentary itself is called That Guy That Was in That Thing. No. The name of the documentary. And it's a documentary and it, it they interviewed like I think it was like seven or eight of the most popular ca um, character actors that we've seen hundreds of times and stuff, but we don't know what their names are. OK, and that was a documentary. It was a great documentary. But one of the guys said, uh, you know, about auditioning, he basically said, you know, you can walk in one day and you walk in and you remind the, you know, the casting guy that you, you remind him of his uh his brother or uh -huh. his, you know that that he that he loves or you can walk in and remind him of his brother that he hates you know what i mean it's like and so it's like you can't how can you read the room you know it's it's really difficult uh moving forward now with the whole covid situation and this type of auditioning i have one tomorrow actually but the way these things kind of work about Look. sending thank you appreciate it you know sending these uh this is new to, for me right i don't think I've, I've, I've never done this. Uh, I've done it now since we have been in COVID, but before that I had to learn this process. But then I'm thinking to myself, think about how much money casting directors are going to save, right? They're going to start doing this is the way I see it's going to happen now. They're realizing a lot of different things right now. They're realizing that they can go out and they can get 200 video submissions that they can spend one week just looking. They're going to narrow that down to 50 actors, right? Then, they, then they're going to do a second audition, again, video, but they're going to do a video talk and they're going to they, just like this. And I'm going to say, all right, do the scene again and they'll they'll coach you. Then they'll narrow it down to 10 and then they'll have 10 people come into their office, you know, and come into a space where they can just rent over at Shelter Studios or one of these places and just get an actual uh, location. I think it's going to change the industry. I think it's also going to create a lot more opportunity for actors that generally cannot just get there. You know, it's difficult for them. And I, I think it's going to uh, be more, more, I think it's gonna, we're going to see better actors in the next 50 years because of what recently happened. If we can actually just keep the planet going and you know, rotating um, long enough to do that. But 
um, I think that it's going to be a, a wonderful uh, experience for a lot of people. So do you, do you think that what will actually, I want to go back about the COVID for a second. What have you been doing during this time? Like what was some of the things that you decided you were going to focus on while you were, while we were all kind of locked in, in lockdown? Building my brand was like my primary objective. I, there was just a few ducks I needed to get in a row because, you know, I always feel like in life, if I'm ahead with, you know, one aspect, I'm falling behind in another. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know what, here's some free time and, and here's the chance to really reevaluate, you know, what I've done, what I'm doing, what I'm going to do and kind of line up with my activity with where I want to be. And that that's like a recipe for success is you can't, you know, you can't just hope, but you have to work towards something right. and boost quality work. So, so like my goal during this health crisis, besides staying healthy and uh, praying that my family and friends are healthy is to just, you know, try to not let my you know imagination get the worst of me. Um, exercise, sleep, write. I've been with um, my girlfriend, Jaylene and I, who's a, a first time female Latina director. Uh, her film Carmen, as you're going to hear about in a week or two on this podcast uh, has been doing well. So now she's starting to really get a knack for it. So we, we co-wrote a cool short that we uh, plan on filming, you know, when it's safe to, and um, really just reaching out to, to like-minded filmmakers who are working on stuff. And I'm trying to get attached to as many projects as I can before you know, it's time to, to open up the gates of planet Earth again. Right. It's right. like, hey, you know what? When that opportunity comes, I'm going to charge out and be like, wow, you know, he's attached to this. He's doing that. And as you're going to see on Facebook, you're only going to hear about the good stuff because, you know, if somebody tells me to take a hike, I, I'm not going to post about rejection. I'm only going to post about something awesome. Yeah. And uh, part, yeah, I think that that's so it, it's also not only good for your audience, but it's good for you not to have to relive it by posting it again. And I always I always crack up when people post like really terrible things. Horrible. It's like, why would you even I mean, because you're rel reliving it now. And not only that, but in a year from now, Facebook is going to remind you. Yeah, that's it's fun. Be like, oh, shit shit that was last year damn it you know now you're back there again so it's like it's not worth it you know um so yeah facebook media, memories are, are pretty haunting at times yeah let's let's talk about uh social media a little bit i know you we, we touched upon it um how important is it to you social media is important for i think career you know like in terms of um film stuff and and it's also it's kind of a boost at times, you know, it's really nice to, to say like, Oh, well I booked this part, even if it's a small part or, you know, my newest film is going to be on Amazon prime or, or like a major streaming service. And I post about it, you know, and then people encourage me and they support it. It's like, wow, that's so nice because it shows that there are good people out there mm -hmm. And they are supportive and there are nice people. And then the funny and weird thing of the dynamic about social media is sometimes people you don't even know very well, just like social media friends are bigger supporters than yeah. some people that you think are close to you because, you know, it, it's sad, but not everybody in the world is rooting for you, but you simply have to accept that rise above and, uh, you know, manifest destiny, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, Let's let's uh, start talking about motivating others. Um, that's a, a great segue. Um, you're right. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people. Um, you don't realize who's really supporting and who isn't supporting. Like, you know, I have like little barometers that I can actually measure. And and you know, you're I'm on so much and I'm on so many different platforms that I kind of can gauge pretty much where I piss off my audience, which I have. Um, okay. Or, or uh, um, I get support, you know what I mean? Either way, my numbers always are going up, you know what I mean? That's my main thing is to find out who's, you know, if I lose 10, I'm going to get 20. You know, I said earlier right. this year, I said this year I'm probably going to lose hundreds of followers, but I'm going to gain thousands. And that's exactly what's been happening. Um, but young, younger people, younger actors, I, I don't mean young in age, I mean newer actors because i started acting late in my life and i 
I was playing music most of my life. So, um, but people that are getting into this industry, what advice would you give to them based on your experience on just keep moving forward and make it as tangible as you can make it? Like, you know, so a lot of people say, you know, you got to just keep going, never give up, you know, just keep moving forward, you know, which is all true. It's all legitimate, you know, but do you have any tangible information that somebody can take with them and say, you know what, that's, this is what I'm going to start doing from now on. Yes, I do. Actually, the fantastic dude I know who's also a very talented uh, cartoonist, actor and comedian, Sean Newman, who's actually part of Frog Boys, which gets a ton of press from NJ.com. Uh, Sean told me something a few years ago that really like snapped, you know, into my brain. And he's like, whatever project I'm doing, I do my best. And I think to myself, when I'm done with it, I don't care what happens to it. I'm not responsible for it. I don't care. It's done. Move on. Mm -hmm. And that was like a revelation to me because I thought I used to really get bent out of shape. I would be depressed if I had done a project and it wasn't successful or it got shelved, you know, or. So from that point on, I'm like, you know what? Let it go. Do your work. Move on. And in my mind, it was like, no matter what, just do the next project. The only thing that's important is what you're doing. And when that's done, the only thing that's important is the project that you're working on. Mm. And if one happens to be successful and one is a flop, well, then, hey, man, you're batting 500. Mm -hmm. So the advice I would give to a young filmmaker or a young actor is if you have the bug, as they say, go for it. I don't care if you're like, you know, 15 or, or you're 75 years old. If you feel like you want to do it, there's no recipe for success. There's no age limit. It's just one of these cool things that I would encourage anybody to do because, you know, you might really just step in and right. catch on fire before I do. And I'm hoping that you'll say, Hey, Dan was cool on that podcast in 2020. Uh, maybe call me if you made it before I did. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Because whatever age a person is, there's a character for that age. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it doesn't matter what the, uh, um, just to touch on that a little bit. I was, one of the things that I do is after an audition, I, I, because, you know, you know, when you get those auditions and you feel like, oh God, I could have done this. I could have said that. Why didn't I do this? You know, I've had a few of those at a few of those. Um, but it just, it, eats your brain, you know? So what I'll do is, and I got this from Casey McDougall, actually, she, she does this. So okay. when I'm, when I'm done with an audition, I plan a thing that I have to do right afterwards. Like I plan an actual meeting. I'm going to meet somebody. I'm going to go somewhere. I have a specific place that I already have scheduled. So by the time I get off to whatever, I'm feeling whatever I'm immediately, I'm engaged in something else. And then that kind of destimulates the, uh, that whatever the, the the mind, our crazy brains are just constantly just telling us, you should, why didn't you do this? Um, <laughs> that's kind of like what I do and, and stuff, and and it has helped. Um, although right now I I'm, I don't have it as much anymore. I don't really, I just do the audition and I just I'm done with it. But um, that's a really great piece of advice, you know. Like the project that you're doing, it should be the only thing you should be focusing on. And when you're done, you're done. You know, I mean, what, what else can you do with it? You know what I mean? It's like, that's, that's, that's it. That's it. You know? So that's a really great piece of advice. Um, Dan, tell me a little bit about what's going on with you um, coming up. I saw, I saw your IMDB. We can't go through it all of it. It's jam packed with like pre-production, 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 pre-production. It was a really, really impressive. Very, very cool. Um, so what, what, what are you really looking forward to coming up? Well, there's a few things that I cannot discuss, unfortunately, because it's not inked up yet. So uh, mm -hmm. maybe if I revisit this show in the future, I'll have some really cool things to discuss. Mm -hmm. But what I can discuss is the project I mentioned earlier uh, that I co-wrote with uh, Jaylene Perez was uh, called What Happened to Randy. And it's a project that uh, allows me to really like dive into a very twisted character. Mm -hmm. And it's going to co-star a very talented actress, uh, Jenna Sierra, who's... Uh, her, she currently resides in Bayonne as well. So if you don't know her, uh, I think you will because I think she's going to really blow up. She's only in her mid-20s, and she's also um, a student of the game, goes to a lot of uh, different 
uh, acting schools and really like pursues her craft. So nice. we're going to co-star in this film and then Jaylene's going to direct. And uh, that's something that we're going to jump into um, pretty much at the second weekend, the second it's safe to do so. Right, right. And uh, with Narrowbridge Films, we are in the process of filming a anthology series of short films that wraps around and, and becomes one cohesive feature film. So we have a couple more segments to finish. And I think when that's done, you know, we're just going to storm the film festivals pretty hard. Yeah, that's yeah. so exciting. Dan, uh, I just want to thank you so much for coming on today. Um, you've given us so much uh, wealth of, of information and a lot of insight, you know, because I think that's really the important thing that people want to tune in to kind of see the insights of what's happening in, in somebody that's on this journey right now, which you're on on an amazing journey. So um, I just want to thank you for, for being here. Um, definitely, definitely let's plan for you to come back again and we'll talk more about the, the stuff you can't talk about now and, uh, and all the other good stuff that's coming up and stuff. So I really appreciate, appreciate you taking the time, man. John, it's been a unique pleasure and uh, I'm happy to talk to you anytime you'll have me on and to anybody that listened tonight or is going to listen in the future. I really appreciate your support and I encourage you to follow your dreams just like John encourages me. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Don't go anywhere. Just stay right there. I'm just going to close the show. I'll be right back. So thanks, man. I appreciate you. Oh, righty. Whoa, that was awesome. That was awesome. Dan is just is just a great guy, and he's just a sincere guy. You know, you you get like the idea that he's really, really uh, pulling for everyone that he meets, and you know that that is he's very sincere, and uh, I just love that about him. Um, a lot of great insights. So I want to thank everybody. We had uh, quite a few people uh, tuned in. Thank you, Michael Hall. Thank you, Lily. Thank you, uh, Matt. Uh, thank you, Cynthia. Thank you. Uh, 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 these other people that just say f Facebook user, that's a strange name for you, but that's your name. That's all good. It's all good. Um, anyway, thank you, everybody. I will see you all on Monday night. I got the happy couple is going to be on. Uh, that should be really cool and fun. And if anybody uh, right there, uh, Dan, Daniel Michael Gregory is right there on the screen, his Instagram. Check him out. He's great. And I will see you all again very soon. Peace out, everyone. Love ya.